Transformations of Quadratic Functions is the title of Section 3 of Chapter 9, and we have a lot to cover in this short video, so let's get busy. I have written here standard form for a quadratic equation. So when we look at number 1, which is supposed to be a review problem, you'll notice that y equals, we have an understood 1 in front of our x squared, However, there's nothing with x, so 0 times x is 0, you don't write 0, and there's also not a c. So b and c are both understood to be 0. All right, so let's find the axis of symmetry, negative b over 2a, so negative 0 over 2 times 1, and that's 0 because 2 goes into 0, 0 times. When you put in 0 and you square it, you find out that your y will also be 0, so your vertex is at 0, 0. And of course, that's where our y-intercept is also. And it's always nice to have three points to draw a parabola. If I plug in 1 for x, we can make a little chart real quick. 1 squared is 1, negative 1 squared is 1, um, 2 squared is 4, negative 2 squared is 4, so that gives me a nice idea of how neatly uh, this parabola, whoops, I need to be up at 4. So 2 is at 4, negative 2 is also at 4. So here is a nice neat parabola coming off of 0, 0. By the way, what's the root? The root is 0. All right, this is called the parent graph, the parent function or the parent graph. When y equals x squared. Every other quadratic equation is an offspring of y equals x squared. Now we're going to go through some transformations, some change. So a transformation is just a change in the position. So in other words, the parabola is going to move around the graph, which means it's going to transform. Number one, if it translates, a translation is when it moves up or down or to the right or to the left. Number two, transformation is a dilation, and that's if it gets narrower or wider. So we can have a skinny parabola or a fat parabola. Here it's going up or down or to the left or to the right. And then number three is a reflection which of course is a mirror image of the uh, parent graph. So it's going to either be a mirror image across the x-axis, which is what most of ours will be, or it could be a mirror image across the y-axis. Okay, so number one, we're gonna be talking about translations. And for the translation, you need to look at your C value. Your C value, we already know, tells us where it hits the y-axis. So if c equals 0, it's going to be on the origin. If c is greater than 0, it's going to move up, so it translates up. If c is less than 0, then it's going to hit below 0 at a negative number, so it's going to translate down. So again, f of x is your parent graph, and here it is in blue. And they're wanting us to graph this function, this parabola, and it wants to know how is it related to the parent graph. Well, from the parent graph in blue, we have translated up to 10 because in ax squared plus bx plus c, b must have been 0, a is understood to be 1, and our c turns out to be 10, and so we moved up to 10. So how did it translate? You'll say it translates up 10 units. That's the answer to this question. So take a second and look at number two. I will tell you the answer, but see if you can figure out the answer first. Because our C is a negative 8, it's going to translate down, translates down 8 units. So if it's so it is our C value that tells us how to translate. All right, flip your paper over. 
we have graphs provided for these next two example problems, but even without the graph, hopefully you are catching on that if you see the C as a positive 7, if you see the C, <laughs> um, if you notice that the C is a positive 7, then that means we're going to translate up 7. If you notice here the C is a negative 3, then from the parent graph we're going to translate down 3. So we don't say that it translated a negative 3. You either translate up or you translate down. You're actually moving a distance, and distance is always positive. So the positive or negative sign tells us whether to translate up or down. Our second transformation is called a dilation. Uh, I want you, when you think of things dilating, to remember to think of your eyes. If you've ever been to get your eyes checked, your eyes um, get dilated, they either get big or small, the pupils, or also probably my better example is to think about a rubber band. So on a dilation, a rubber band can be stretched, or if you release the rubber band, you could even compress it, you can push it together. So either stretched or compressed. Those are two words you need to remember. So looking at our key concepts here, in green is the parent graph. So notice there's your parent graph. Uh, the red parabola has been stretched. Notice the A value is going to be greater than 1 if it gets stretched vertically. If your A is greater than 1, your parabola is going to get skinny. So either think of it as getting stretched or getting skinny. If your A is less than 1, it's going to be a short fat parabola. So less than 1, but also greater than 0. We don't. Why would they need to say greater than 0? Now your A can be negative. The negative does not have anything to do with the dilation. The negative, remember, causes a reflection. So again, we're looking at the absolute value of A. We're not looking at see, the absolute value, not whether it's positive or negative. Our negative A still tells us whether we open up or whether we open down. I hope you're listening to this video and not just watching it because that's some important information. Maybe tell your friend. Okay, so in this example problem there is not a translation. We are not moving up or down. We are only dilating. So our A value is one half. One half is less than one. So that tells me this must have been the original parent graph, and because my A is less than 1, it was compressed. It got fatter. So I'll highlight the new parabola in red. So that's your new parabola. It is fatter than the parent graph, and because of this 1 half causes us to know that our parabola is compressed. All right, so our next example on the next page says to describe how this graph, m of x equals 2x squared plus 1, how is it related to f of x equals x squared? In other words, how does it relate to the parent graph? So thinking of it in standard form, our a has a value of 2, our c in this equation has a value of 1. So the 2, the fact that it's greater than 1, tells us that it's going to be stretched vertically, and the C being 1 tells us that it translates up 1. So that is the answer. It is stretched, I guess you could say vertically, vertically it got skinnier, and it translates up 1 unit. I'm going to let you try number three on your own, please. Check for understanding. I hope you notice that it's stretched because this number is greater than one. Um, but it does not move. It's not translated. So it only is stretched. All right, number four, describe this graph. So one half, that's less than one. So that tells us that it's going to be compressed. So it's compressed. And uh, the 4 tells us that it is translated, compressed and trans, 
translated, translate at four units. And translation, or yes, no, transformation, excuse me, all these words are running together. Transformation, another way that we can transform a quadratic equation is by reflecting it. And that's like a mirror, a mirror image. We've already talked about if our A value is negative, then it is going to tell us that the parabola opens down. So again, the graph of the function negative f of x reflects the graph. So it's going to reflect uh, the parent graph across the x-axis. Now this is the main one we're going to deal with. But know that if the x is negative, then it translates across the y-axis. But that's not our normal um, scenario. We're going to be dealing with the first one first. So here we go. Number one. We know it's a negative 3x squared. Now 3, the negative, the negative 3, this tells us that it's reflected across the x-axis. The 3 tells us that it, that it is stretched 3 units. And then the plus 1 tells us that it translates, so the 1 tells us that it translates up one unit. Okay, so it's reflected because it's negative. It's stretched because uh, A is greater than one. And it translates because of the plus one. All right, you try number two to check your understanding. Please pause the video because I do want to tell you the correct answer. So try it on your own first. Pause right here. Okay, so the negative 5, if you think of the absolute value 5, is greater than 1, so that tells us that it's going to stretch. The negative tells us that it reflects over the x-axis, and then the negative 4 for our c value tells us that it translates down 4 units. Try the standardized test question on your own. Okay, I need you to read the test item. You're given this parabola, and you need to find the equation of the graph. Let me talk you through it. Here are step by step the way to think about it. Notice that the graph opens up. Therefore, the equation for C and D are eliminated. We know that it's not going to be C and it's not going to be D because of those negative signs. Now, how do we fill that blank in? It says the leading coefficient should be positive because our graph is opening up. The parabola is translated down, so that tells me that the C value, since it's translated down two units, the C value should be negative two. Therefore, the only uh, possible equation is choice A, because A has the negative two. So we eliminate, excuse me, I can't quite get there. We eliminate B because of this positive two, so A is the correct answer. All right, you try number two on your own. Bring me that answer first thing tomorrow, and have a great rest of your day.